I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings. In the Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is a, I miss that, that is clown. Sad I'm clown. Proud <laughs> my Dude, that's pretty good. This is the gloom, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha packs, exploring their F3 experiences and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. Shout out to our sponsors, Major Team Mortgage, Omaha Laser Dentistry, Exclusively Eye Care, Liberty Core Real Estate, Avier Wealth Management, and Apex Men's Clinic. We appreciate their support. Yo, Gloom listeners, it's The Plague, and today I'm talking about getting your finances as fit as your physique. Our very own F3 Omaha brother, Jean-Claude, a.k.a. Michael Fluger at Avior Wealth Management, specializes in building personalized financial plans. He understands the journey you walk in life as a man of faith, safeguarding your family and creating a legacy. Jean-Claude is ready to help you plan your finances with intention so that you can live with purpose. And that's just the beginning when you work with the Avior Wealth team. Visit avior.com slash F3. That's A-V-I-O-R dot com slash F3. And see how Michael can guide your financial journey today. Now let's get back to the gloom. And we're back. Uh, I'm excited to get this guy's story out there. It's been fun kind of watching him and uh, and several family members uh, get in, involved in F3 and uh yeah, I've got our man Snowman uh, on the show today and, and really um, was recently a leader at uh, Cornhusker Handicap, uh, really keeping things moving and, and shaking on the, the east side there. But uh, Snowman, it's good to see you. You look good. Uh, and uh, curious if you would just take us back to the beginning, sort of um, who he aged you, if you remember what the first workout was like. We always like to give the cue a hard time if you remember whether it was a difficult workout or not. And then tell us how you got the name Snowman. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, first and foremost, uh, Plague, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here. I know I know we had a little pre-talk here. I, I'm I'm new to this myself, but uh, now my interest is uh, is peaked here. So I'm gonna have to check some of these out moving forward. But um, yeah, for, first and foremost, so uh, my uh, brother, which was Sandy <laughs> Cheeks, um, I'm sure you know he, he kind of made his way around some of the old sides for a while there. Uh, he's currently in the Marine Corps, so he's he's not really working out with us much, but uh, I believe he's coming back for Labor Day. So he, he's kind of the one that got nice. the whole ball rolling here. I, and, and really, I guess it's beyond him. He's kind of the one that gave us the ultimate nudge to get us out. But uh, he had Stapler. Yeah. Uh, Stapler was uh, – he's really the only reason anybody ever heard about F3. So, uh, and, and, you know, everybody who knows him knows that that's always a pleasure to be around him and just a great dude overall, which, uh, which come to find out, you know, what, what are we two coming up on three years? I believe, uh, wow. no, two years, two years. I'm sorry. Not three. Uh, but yeah, so it's, uh, and everywhere you look around, uh, it's just all yeah. good people. Right. So I, I know, uh, doesn't matter what site you're at or what day of the week it's uh, everybody's got the same message so yeah my uh so believe it or not uh my dad which is uh caruso and then now we've got my uncle which is woody and then uh cousin predator those are kind of the main ones still coming around uh the, the, there was a blip we can get to later where we kind of had a flush of waldrons <laughs> kind of flood of sight we had eight uh eight people we named that day. So, and then they were all Waldrons or tied into the family somehow. But um, yeah, so th- our, our first one, we went down to the Canyon and it was actually Frosty was yeah. on the queue. So uh, I know Frosty's a great guy to have on the queue. Your first, first time coming out to Cornhusker, you know, everybody at least knows who he is when they ask who, uh, who named you and everything yeah. like that. So uh, our, our first day out, um, it was raining and uh, we were down at the Canyon and Frosty said, hey, I got a real something special. Uh, I, I forget exactly what sparked um, his his beat down that day, but it was uh, – there was something – it was either Suicide Awareness Month, week. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure, but that was basically the gist of the, the COT that day as well. And Frosty – was like, hey, we're going to head over, uh, you know, the canyon's over mm-hmm. and Gene Leahy over there. And he's like, hey, we're going to head over past the uh, 
the CHI or, or what, yeah. you know, whatever it's called these days. I, I don't know if the bank owns it now or whatever, if it's still CHI, but he's like, we're going to head that way. I got something special over there that means a lot to me. So we're, my dad's sitting there, I'm sitting there, you know, I, I fresh off the couch or kind of like, yeah, that doesn't seem like overly <laughs> close. <laughs> a lot of you know, we end up, uh, we're jogging and Frosty's kind of stopping every now and again. And we're doing, you know, monkey humpers at the street and whatnot. So we're pushing down, just kind of figuring out like what all, you, everyone knows how that first day is. You're like, I don't really know what's going on, but I know everybody's mm-hmm. just loving it right now. It's making me love it. So it's raining on us. We long story short, we get past the CHI and down by the bridge and, uh, there was a bench over there that was dedicated to um, uh, it was, it was one of Frosty's, I believe, good friend's sons. If I, if I'm remembering it all correctly, uh, come to think, I haven't, I haven't really talked to him much about it since that day, but uh, I, I kind of remember it clearly, I believe. So yeah, I believe it was his friend's son who had committed suicide and they had um, put that bench out there mm. in honor of him. And Frosty brought us all over to it, which was, which was just awesome. You know, this is our first day. We we're not real sure what's going on. Everybody's throwing weird <laughs> names around and saying all that free lingo. And, uh, so the next thing, you know, Frosty says, Hey, we, we had a PAX member with us. Frosty said, uh, Hey, got a, got a PAX member that, uh, that wants to, wants to share something. He said, so let's head to the top of the hill. So we went to the top of the hill. Uh, and then it got, it got really deep, but, uh, you know, it was like one of those things where it, it it, it, it kind of set the pace for what the entire F3 journey has mm-hmm. been so far. Uh, and the PAX member just sat there before us all. And, um, you know, he was just down there for the beat down, not, not necessarily anything to do with Frosty. I, I don't believe any of it was coordinated. Um, and he said, I, I'd like to say something. So we get to the top and, and he had told us his story about, uh, you know, some dark times and uh, the bridge that we were looking at. He's like, there, there was a point in time where I was, like, you know, I, I was contemplating jumping wow. off of that bridge right there. We were all like, holy cow. So, you know, and I mean, that's not even just a first day thing. That was just like a, everybody gets that humanity thing going where you're like, that is deep. But, uh, you know, like, thank, you know, thank God you're yeah. here doing this with us. We thought it was bad running <laughs> over here. And then you get to the end and it was just uh, kind of everything came full circle and it was all in all, my my dad was not very happy with the amount. <laughs> I believe it was two three miles clocked on the Garmin watch, but uh, you know he was uh, it, it, that was rough on him. But hey, he's still coming out to this day. So uh, you know, it just it was one of those things where it, it was just a great deal all around. Still raining yeah. the entire time. You know, we're getting back doing exercises the whole way, um, and. Uh, I, I don't know if you want to jump in. I was going to say, I think the next thing you had was the, the name. Yeah. yeah. Walk us through that. Yeah. I would love to hear how you, how'd you end up with snowman? Uh, I, I joke around frequently. Cause I, I just say, I, I don't actually know, but uh, it was one of those frosty things. Like we got that day we had Caruso and snowman were the two names that Frosty <laughs> came up with for, uh, for my dad and I. So, um, you know, they, they asked me about myself. I, from what I can remember, uh, I, you know, I, I just told them about my time in the Marine Corps, kind of what I did there. Um, at the time I had, uh, just started, uh, a business that was dispatching truck drivers. Uh, that's, mm. that's no longer, uh, we'll <laughs> leave it at that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was kind of all like the fresh stuff going on there. So I, I'm saying that like, Hey, I worked at Warner when I got out, I was a logistics guy in the Marine Corps. I, I ran like a motor pool and this and that. And then, uh, Frosty just goes, <laughs> snowman. And he was like, yeah, Smokey <laughs> and the Bandit. And that was all he said. And it was like, everybody, you know, you know, the trucking guy and never. I'm like, I've never in my life have I seen it. So I, you know, I had nothing, uh, mm-hmm. nothing profound, honestly. And yeah. from my point of view, I was just like, oh, okay, that's it. So for the longest time, I joked, but hey, Frosty still stands by it to this day. If he's around, I, you know, I'll throw a little subtle jab at him and he'll just, yeah, everybody that knows is funny. Bandit, yeah. So. Hey, maybe I'm the oddball. I don't, yeah, I don't know, I don't know that sure, reference but, either. That, you know. does, that doesn't ring a bell, man. That's <laughs> funny. I, you know, you'll have to watch the movie, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that's the truth. And I, I believe oh, it was okay. from the show, if I'm not mistaken. He was saying from the TV show, he's like, yeah, the guy with the <laughs> That's and, funny. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, what an experience, man, for your first um, workout. Yeah. And definitely, you know, and that's, that is quite a bit of running, right? Most of our workouts don't have three miles of, of running included. What was your yeah. initial impression? Like, did you feel like, you know, were you like hooked right away or were you sort of like, Oh, this is weird or too deep or what was your kind of initial thought? Um, well, to clear, to clarify, it was not quite three. It was like oh, okay. three. I still, still more <laughs> than average day, but uh, not, not to be uh, I think it was 2.3. We it came felt like now, three but, for uh, Caruso, right? It, it's, oh, Caruso was not happy. You know, he's uh, this, this was him off retirement off the couch, yeah. you know, so I, it was much worse for him. I, I was much closer removed from the Marine Corps. And like, uh, I, you know, after I got out, I even did some like 75 hard and stuff. So I, I had at least had the mindset of working out, but I had tapered off uh, significantly when we finally got yanked into it. It was like, okay, I yeah. need something. Yeah. I'm not doing it on my own, but uh, for me, just because there were so many like stops along the way, uh, forgive me. I, I I don't know if they're the the F three terminology for the stops in the in the Marine Corps. They call oh, it yeah. a fart lick. And that's what that, you would sprint and then you would stop and then uh, you do some exercise and then move on. So, uh, do you, is well, that no. So, so sometimes they'll call that like a string of pearls kind of workout, but yeah, string of pearls. That's what I was gonna say. I knew there was something. That's right. Yeah, it's very similar, right? And and it was all the way to this just awesomely like deep impactful place for frosty and then you get the just pax member who was tagging along that day and just getting getting additional like wow um i i apologize i just went back to the moment there again what, what was the no no you're good you're good just before, just so. your general you know overall thoughts and i guess from a like a first staff kind of fitness perspective was it was it comparable to, it sounds like it maybe was comparable to what you were used to doing from a workout kind of first staff perspective uh, I very familiar, like the, the structure, right? Maybe not so much. Cause, uh, I, I would say most of the times I've done these kind of work and you know, the, the coolest part about F3 is there's such an awesome mix of people that it's like, you have that guy who's, whether you're trying to push him or not, he's pushing himself to the max and it just kind of drives mm -hmm. the people that are looking for that. Or that you got the broken guys, uh, Caruso, I was running with Caruso that day. So, you know, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't sure. gas at all for the most part. It was kind of uh, just making sure he was all right, getting there. I think the exercises mm -hmm. were getting me more than the than the jog in place to place. But uh, I, I think the coolest part was uh, well, we had the story at the end. Uh, we had Pax member uh, mm -hmm. in a wheelchair as well, Waffle House, yeah, um, and just all yeah everybody coming together, pushing him. It was like everybody smiling. Uh, everyone's you know the. It, it's almost impossible to walk away and be like, yeah, oh, no, no, that's right. weird. Like that's why, you know, I, I find that extremely hard to come across. Some people I could understand, like you came out and you're like, who, I don't know if I'm trying to be out on blast and get that. Frosty has a great story. Anybody who hasn't heard Frosty's intro story that it, it's, you know, I could see that mindset. I, I would understand it, but, uh, as far as where I was from is it was just like, you just saw how scalable it was and truly no one mm -hmm. cares. If you want to walk, you want to be the last guy there. If everybody's cruising and you want to just stay back and work out, it's, you, yeah. you know, it, it, it's beautiful across That's the board, awesome. isn't it? Awesome to hear. Um, what would be curious, what was your, do you remember, like, what was your second workout then? Did you go that Monday or did it take you a while to kind of get into the rhythm or what was that progress like? So we did, we came out hot and heavy actually. So, uh, we went to, um, uh, Monday, Ironwood, yep. Ironwood. we went to Ironwood. Um, and, uh, I forget his name. Sky. Um, oh, Merit yeah, badge. Yeah. There you go. Wow. <laughs> pulled that one from deep down. Uh, Mer I, that's been a long time. I, I, maybe one time since then I've seen him, but, uh, that was, he had us out there doing uh, – I, I couldn't tell you what. We ran around the park. There was just a lot of miscellaneous. And then at one point, there was kind of like a 
Mm -hmm. a bowl out there in the park where it was like a hill over here came down in a flat valley and then went up a hill so you would have you like sprint one way and then uh you would do an exercise there and then it was bernie sanders the exact yeah. oh it was brutal that one was like a, a little sore from saturday just from all the the monkey humpers and weird stuff i hadn't been doing and then uh just getting right back but at that point it was kind of like hook line and sinker you met a lot of the same guys uh going to that site um but then you met some new yeah. ones and then it just kind of evolves yeah. from there and yeah there's really no bad i love it and around. have you did you start partaking in like pre-runs or any or pre rucks or any of that sort of stuff or how how sort of far down the first f uh journey did you go no i i didn't so much so i did the um i did the the first uh Wow. Why am I missing it? February. It was really cool. Oh, Seesaw. Yeah. 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 Six. Yeah. Seesaw. Wow. Okay. There you go. Uh, so I did the Seesaw the first year and a lot of that. I, I was not a pre runner. That's not a. I, I wasn't a runner in the Marine Corps. I had enough to get my numbers I needed, but uh, no one you would ever meet that knew me then would tell yeah. you I was a runner. So that's. Uh, I, I, I'm i I'm a okay with that, yeah. by the way. So. Uh, I went out, I have gone one morning. I met Rocket out at, um, well, actually I met Frosty out there and ended up running with Rocket, but, and we did, uh, we did Shirley Street before, I believe it was Cornhusker. That's brutal. Yeah, that was, I was like, yeah, I, I, you probably are not going <laughs> to see me very often here. That was, that was three of like, I was gassed and then, uh, good for those guys though. Rocket said he, he couldn't get it the first time and he's, He's out there every week. He's like, I try to tackle. That's him. awesome. You know, yeah. guys, they're across the board too. Shirley's one of those uh, F3 Omaha sort of landmarks of like, you know, if you're going to go to oh, Cornhusker, sure. right, you might as well pre-run Shirley and try, try to. <laughs> yeah, if you're making a guest appearance and you're not going to be back for a while, you might as well just. Yeah, for sure. Shirley, you know? Well, tell us, you know, kind of thinking about we got fitness and then fellowship the second half, right? And sort of around like relationships. So curious, you know, you came out right with with your dad, and then you've got your brother, you've got the uncle, cousin. So sort of a family affair kind of deal. But um, would be curious, like, has being in F three together had any impact on those relationships at all? Uh, I mean, I, I would say a absolutely. So as far as my, like my dad and brother, um, they, at least since I've got back at this point. So uh, my brother's nine years younger. So a lot of the time, like growing up that it was like we, we actually spoke two different mm -hmm. languages. It was kind of weird. You know, he had the like stuff. I didn't understand what he was talking about, but it was like the hip stuff stuff. I'm sure we were doing to our parents that so we just didn't realize we were rolling <laughs> with it. But uh, aside from that, never a bad relationship uh, across the board. And then um, I think once I got out and we were kind of like closer in age yeah. or, you know, he was finishing up college and stuff. Uh, it, it was all good. So I, I think more so those relationships are kind of what maybe started the journey rather than than strengthened along. Now, as far as like uh, my uncle and cousin, it's a. Uh, it, it's good stuff. So uh, Woody and, and Predator, um, you know, Predator had, has uh, like form of Down syndrome and I believe autism, if, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it, it's mm -hmm. just great to have him out there. You know, even every family event, I just walk up to him. We all give it to him. <laughs> you know, he, awesome. he loves it. He eats it up. And it, it, so, I mean, as far as that stuff's concerned, you can't beat that. That's just valuable time. Like, uh, my uncle and I was, it was family events. Now it's like, you know, week, weekly, yeah. more or less, uh, getting to see each other. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely. I, I would say just good across the board. And, um, it, and really, I, I think what keeps everybody coming back in all honesty is, uh, is just the people yeah. you run into, you know, it's a, it's going to coffee. That's the, that's the best part really. And in the, in the beginning, I'm sure Polaroid has a story. Polaroid's probably the, the reason any of this changed. Cause uh, when we first started coming out, um, I believe it was Futurama that same, maybe two weeks after we had started, because we were going, I, I believe, five days a week. We didn't go back to the canyon, but we were going Monday through Friday for probably the first mm -hmm. month, I want to say. But it was it was second or third week of coming out, and uh, 
we would just because I, I would have to be back to my house by like, you know, 7.15 or so. And uh, my dad was retired. That didn't matter. My brother didn't have to be in until like 8. So he was kind of hoping to just burn mm-hmm. some time in the morning. Uh, so he would hang out with us. And we would just drink coffee on my dad's tailgate and like just sit there and chat and talk and everything like that. It's like, yeah, this is good stuff. Get done with the workout, just hanging out, drinking coffee. And then uh, I think, I can't remember, second or third week, like I said, and Polaroid's like, you guys just going to keep drinking coffee? <laughs> Something along these lines. I'm not going to quote him. He's like, you're just going to keep drinking coffee on the tailgate? You can come up to us. Starbucks. And uh, he's like, everybody will be up there. Or it's Scooter. Yeah. I believe it's Scooter's down off Cap. Yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, everybody's going to be up there just talking. And uh, we're like, all right, yeah, we'll go, we'll go up there. Let's do, you know, it's five minutes up the road or whatever. So, and then it was like, kind of from that day on, you know, you get in there, you got Demogorgon, mm-hmm. all all the guys that are on that site, and it was just like, uh, oh, this is good stuff. So then it was like, coffee became mm-hmm. part of the ritual, you know, and it was. Uh, that's just kind of the snowball yeah, effect. There, I love I it. I curious your thoughts on like the you know because we're you you mentioned um, Frosty's workout sort of about suicide right and you think about the high rates of male suicide especially in our sort of age range and then you start thinking about the causes and you know male loneliness all that sort of stuff so the you know kind of these relationships right can be key to helping us as men kind of work through life but um you might have had some of that right in the in the marine corps so just kind of curious like um any thoughts on like how to best go about developing some of those friendships for guys i think for a lot of guys it's maybe hard to do but i don't know uh i i i wish i did i i don't have anything uh anything profound i i i'm look I'm blessed to personally never have have had to had to deal with any of those issues myself. So I, I I couldn't speak for it intelligently, but um, I from some of the COTs Mm -hmm. even right, like some guys. The best part about F three is it's like guys typically don't go. You know, maybe you do. I'm I'm not saying generalize, but. over females or like uh, youth, like guys are not going to go to like counselor. They, they, they don't really go pay to, they're going to internalize yeah. from what I've seen, you know? Um, and, and really just getting out at a place like this where it's like from the very get go, you hear like, Oh no, you, you can just modify and just not do something if you don't want to do it. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going out there to like not do the exercise that everybody's doing. Well, then when you start realizing like, well, there's guys at every side who are going to modify mm-hmm. one way or another. So it's like, if this thing, it, it, just getting out there, sorry, I about went on a no, weird good. tangent right there, but I, I think getting out there and like it, and being around guys, like you get those, you hear guys COT and it's about uh, what, yeah, Hey, you've heard yeah. more than me uh, play again. You, you know how it is. It's like, you never know what's coming. And that's right. another beautiful thing about it is it's uh and I think that's kind of what it is. Cause if you had asked me prior to, if, uh, if something like F3 would have appealed to me, like more than likely the answer was no, like this, that doesn't seem like it fits my personality very well, but, um, that's just like, that was a terrible, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the preconception made no sense. You come out and it's like, well, it's impossible to not find at least one person you you can relate to about something in this group and that people are going to force it out of you. I'm not, I'm not gonna, this is, this is part of my personality. Like I'm saying, I, I don't initiate many conversations. I'm not going to like be the guy who's the first one to talk, but if you're that guy to me, I'm very receptive to come back and, and have a very vocal conversation. I probably <laughs> ramble more than I should when, uh, when that's there, but it's, uh, but I'm not the guy sure. who initiates that. So it's possible to go to a site where there's not that guy who's going to initiate conversation amongst the whole group, you know? Yeah. So it's just uh, it, to not to be completely off topic there, but if I had to guess just getting out there and that, like just seeing for yourself what those guys are actually willing to do for you. Cause it's, it's not insincere. I've never seen an insincere um, anything you know like everybody who says it they they truly mean it um now whether whether you take it or not like i i'm 
I'm one who like tries to avoid the yeah. like take help when you can maybe if I need it, you know, be in psych you. I, I certainly needed help. And uh, if it wasn't for, uh, for Polaroid and Gunner kind of like, Hey, can we help you with anything? It was like, I, I wasn't yeah. going to ask for help and that, that's a false line, but uh, you, you know, that's, that's the coolest part is you've got those guys who, uh, and, and that's me just, you know, a change of work and, and kind of like life situation going on with uh, kids hitting a weird age we had never seen before. And a lot of these like personal life things coming up uh, was affecting like how often I can get out to workouts mm-hmm. anymore. Um, and, you know, and I'm sitting there just kind of like, okay, this is a one day a week thing. I must have this right. Well, I was struggling for a while. I was like chasing the tail, like trying to book yeah. maybe a week out, you know, maybe if I'm lucky I got three weeks booked. And then, uh, then I was like, okay, that's, that's next week's problem. So, and I think those guys sense that luckily, uh, and, and they came in and were just like, Hey, how, how can we help? You that's know, awesome. they, they, going to let you fail that that's the cool part about f3 i think is uh that they, they truly yeah well i love that and i think you're you're kind of touching on something that you know a lot of us as men are are we struggle with that right we don't ask for help until it's too you know way far down the road until we've you know failed and um what do you think it was that allowed you to receive that help or just the fact that they offered was enough to say yeah i'll, t- I'll take it oh one hundred percent. It was. Uh, it was just his honesty. I, in and you know the part that made me feel. I was like, uh, Polaroid had put on there. Like, I don't want to make you feel like, but like, if you need some help, he's like, I've noticed you're kind of like trying to fill some slots, like last minute, which I was. Mm-hmm. It was. It was ugly for. Yeah, there, there was. I, I, hey, some might argue the whole time, but who knows? <laughs> you know, there, there was only a couple of times where it was uh, booked out in advance. I guess. Um, and, and just that point in time, I was like, you know, at first I was kind of like, ah, oh, man, then I'm like, well, he's like asking you. And he was just like full up front. Like, I don't want to feel like you to feel like I'm stepping. I just, if you mm-hmm. would like it, it's there. Like, well, absolutely. You know, everybody know, who knows that guy, know that's, that's top tier dude right Heck there. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's not just I love it. There, Curious, so. you kind of mentioned your kids there. Have you gotten them out to a workout at all? You brought them to a 2.0? I have not. So I have, my daughter is six, oh, okay. my son's five. So I haven't, uh, I haven't, yeah, I don't, I mean, he might come out. I, I don't know what that <laughs> looks like, but uh, yeah. yeah, maybe some. Sometimes we do the, like a 2.0 <laughs> Halloween workout or something. I, I know I, I have two daughters. Yeah. I tried to bring one of them and, and it, I basically just was carrying her the whole time, right? She didn't she didn't want to be oh, there. Yeah. So Hey Gloom listeners, it's the plague. Question for you. Are you ready to perform at your peak? Well our man P Soup and the Apex Men's Clinic is here to help you achieve optimal health. Whether it's managing general health concerns, recovering from injuries, or optimizing your hormones, they have you covered. Their comprehensive services include testosterone replacement therapy, cutting edge treatments, and personalized care plans tailored just for you. At Apex Men's Clinic, you're not just another number. Their expert team is dedicated to helping you feel your best. Visit apexmensclinic.com today to schedule a free consultation. At Apex Men's Clinic, it's men's health done right. Well, curious, you know, as you think about then the the third F, kind of the faith piece, um, I would love to just hear your your journey, maybe you know, throughout the years, what's been your journey from a, a faith perspective. Um. Well, I, I'll I'll just leave it at, at as far as uh, like faith. I I'll just speak generally. Like I excuse me, I'm sorry, get that out of the way. Um. Like personally, I I'm Catholic. Um. Mm-hmm. But I I. I don't even think it personally, I don't see how that does F3 any justice for me to, to declare that or even say it out loud. Cause it, in all honesty, the majority of people that go up, you may have a sense of like, okay, this, um, you know, this guy, he the, the way he's speaking or, or closing out in prayer is like, okay, he's, he's comfortable with God. Like I assume he's some sort of Christian religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, other people, you just have absolutely no idea. And they'll say sky Q the whole time. And you're like, well, I think the beauty of it all is it's like, well, 
the end of the day, I think it's all in the eye of the beholder. Um, like, like there are those generalized guidelines, which for the most part, deep down, we're all going to know. Um, but whether, you know, um, it, whether you follow any religion or not, or, or you're actually anti-religion, I don't believe it matters because um, even people who are anti like structured religion can find their own, hopefully the, the goal is to find their own peace, you know? And I, I think that's all like self, um, self-reflection comes from that a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah, it, it, any way you look at it, whether it's inward or, uh, you know, um, or outward and you're, you're seeking those answers, uh, I, I think that's the overall purpose of religion. So when you come out and it's like you have the freedom to sit there and be because it's like fitness, fellowship, faith. A lot of people might just be like, oh, faith, I'm not going I'm not going to a church group. And it's like, oh, look, it is so not a church group at right. all. Um, I that kind of frightened my dad, my dad. Funny story, side story here, but yeah. uh, right off the bat. So. You know, I, I was out, we were running, it was that Monday, the same work I was telling you about merit badge. So um, we were running and I just remember I was like, oh, I was, I was burned out doing like Bernie Sanders and, um, you know, I, I wasn't that far removed from the military. I'm not as like self-conscious about like if I say a cuss word out loud, whereas yeah. like my dad, like, uh, you know, that was, that, that's like the worst thing to do in front of people you don't like. 100 percent no is to like cuss well i, I started cussing because i was like hey, hey whatever it was you know just a normal banter out there while we're rolling and i'm just oh and he's like dude dude you can't be doing that. <laughs> you know you can't be doing that and i i think that was kind of the mindset in the beginning was it was like this is like a religious thing we got to see how this goes which is, I, I would say that's what's also awkward even even in the Catholic faith, you know, is like there's the, there's ways you can do it. They, and there's like the buy the book, like you either 100% mm-hmm. in or you're 100% out. And it's like, well, I don't I don't personally believe in that. I, I think there's good in everything. And, uh, I, hey, we're, we're all going to mess up at a, a thing or two here and there. It's just trying to mitigate that is, is the overall message to, I'd say, humanity over just uh, – so I, I, faith in humanity is maybe more so, but uh, I, I personally I, I think it's it's just awesome how it works. You know, there's some guys yeah. who you know, just I, I, hey they they're not Catholic like me, and I love perspectives like that. You know how how are you ever gonna? And, and if you listen to it, it's like you can almost hardly distinguish. The overall message is almost always the same, you know, or along mm-hmm. the same guidelines. It, it's vastly different. We'll we'll leave yeah. it. It is vastly different, but uh, the flow of it is like it's all for positivity. There's no negativity yeah. coming out of those, those prayers. Yeah, I, I love it. And I love the story. You know, it is interesting, right? Because it's um, if you just come into the group, right, and you hear a safe fitness fellowship and faith, we don't necessarily go into detail on what we what we mean by that. So then you you could interpret that, uh, you know, in many different ways. And, um, you know, I, I think for me, I, I totally agree with you. I think the coolest thing is like, we create space for guys to figure out what they believe, you know, mm-hmm. and, and ultimately the way we do that is they get to be around guys that have different beliefs and ask questions, have deeper conversations, you know, and really come up with, Hey, here's, you know, here's the belief system I'm going to apply to my life. And, um, yeah, I, I've always appreciated that. I think when I, um, you know, I, I think when I came into the group, I was sort of like, you know, thinking it was more of a Christian group. And then you realize over time, like, that's not really what we need in the world, right? We don't necessarily need more, more religious groups pushing an agenda. We just need a, a space for guys to, you know, be able to dialogue about that stuff. So I love it. No, that was very well put. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had thought of it that way, but that, no, I, I, <laughs> If you think about it, like taking a hard stance or like saying, hey, like the religion and, and uh, it's been a while since I've read Free the Lead. Um, but I I believe he even mentions that when he just talking about the the third F is it's like this isn't about Jesus or guy. if I'm not mistaken, I'm not yeah, I'll just yeah. paraphrase just briefly, but I, I believe that was the overall thing. This is not directed at anyone yeah. it's directed at everyone you know so heck yeah 
I love it. Well, you know, curious because there's also kind of this this other side of the third F with like community service and that sort of stuff. Have you had an opportunity to participate in any of those events or with young kids? My guess is maybe not, but I, don't I, I was going to say have an opportunity. Like I, it, I've been around when they've been there and I have not executed on any of them. Uh, it, no, I, I haven't. I, I know uh, Gunner was asking for help for something and, uh, we, we ended up getting a tree job that weekend and, and work. No, no, I have not. So. Yeah, that's all right. What, um, you know, some of it too is like we've, it, within F3, we've got all these different things, right? There's, you know, now we're up to 70 workouts, you know, that you could choose from per week. We got second F and third F and happy hours and all this stuff. And I think the, one of the challenges is sometimes guys feel like they have to do all the stuff to, you know, but that's not really the the case. I don't know what's been your experience. No, I, I, I would say 100% that's not the case. I, I, as far as, um, I mean, there's the seesaw, which is still a beat down. That's just, that was irregular for me. Cause usually the weekends were like at family's home and, uh, yep. um, other than that, we went down to, um, what's the, over in La Vista, the brewery, was it Kincader? Is that, is that right? Uh, cross train maybe. Oh, or? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah. they had a, a, whatever event there. So we went, we went to that, but then, I mean, outside of that, no, it hasn't been, uh, I, I haven't done too many of the extracurricular, uh, yeah. things. But I mean, even, even like that, right. You go up there, everybody's drinking some beers. It's like most people I didn't know. And the coolest part is, you're all there for the same reason. It doesn't actually matter. What's your name? Oh, Snowman. You know, and then yeah. it's just like, okay, well, here we go. We're just right back into it. It's like showing up to any other beat down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, the other piece of this, you know, as you think about uh, the mission, right? So reinvigorating male community leadership. And we, we try to do that with, you know, we, you do a VQ and then you, we try to give you opportunity to lead the site and, I'm curious, do you remember your VQ at all? Is that something you remember? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, I actually relived it. Um, it uh, it wasn't at like the year the year mark, but I had found the paperwork from. You know what? Oh, you got it right there. No, huh? no not down here anymore. Okay, uh, I was gonna say I think I brought it in because. Uh, well, whatever with back class, I believe at the time, but, um, so what it was, we were at, it was at Cornhusker and, uh, we went over into the, the East garage. Okay. Um, and so it was basically like each floor. So we would start and I, I just remember sitting there like, how can we make this thinking like, can we get two full rounds? Like, how's it going to go? Is like it going to stop at each floor, but we were running the ramps, not the stairs. Nice. Uh, so it started. Yeah. I kind of made it rough. I, I just remember like, okay, this is the first one. It's gotta be good. I, I came out and like the intro and stuff. I had like prepped the night before. I was like, okay, yeah, make sure you don't mess this up in the very beginning. So I was like, yeah, cool <laughs> intro, like ready to go. And it just came out perfectly. Everything flowed 100% perfect on the, I think there was 32 people there. Wow. Uh, it came out, just flowed perfectly. And I just remember Frosty was like, that might have been the best VQ intro <laughs> or whatever it was. And I was like, nah, okay, so killed that Nailed one. It. Yeah. Like, well, here we go. So, uh, Othello was there and I remember cause we ran into the garage and, uh, and I started, so I was like, I wanted the first floor to be like all the things I hated to do. So it was like chicken peckers, I think is how we started it. And it was 30 of them in cadence. It was, it was ugly. So it was a lot of like 30 reps of like basically everything. And I had like, I want to say three or four exercises per floor. I tried to switch the muscle groups wow. floor. And then by the time we hit the top, it was just core. Uh, but it was like doing the, I think it's Cindy Croft, like the oblique, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so we did those and yeah, I was running, it was like doing 30 counts of most everything. So I think it was like chicken peckers and holding balls of the wall. There's a lot of shoulders down low. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we got up and I, I remember like very 
it was like we hit the second, maybe it was by the third floor, but I want to say it was as early as the second floor when I yelled out like 30, whatever the next floor was. Like Othello was like, oh, you yeah. know, that's loud. <laughs> that was awesome. And I was just like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe you're not so cool for doing that. <laughs> like, yeah, you probably wouldn't be all right with said no yeah. getting murdered and i was the only one who knew what was coming you know that's half the battle i think if you don't know what's coming and you got to keep hearing 30 it's it's probably not great but we yeah. made it all the way through came back down and uh i think we did half reps for the second round all the way up and it was perfect timing made it back over and uh yeah, I think it was just rancid hammers on the way out. And that was- That's awesome. I, You know, there's something – it seems like we always do 20 reps of stuff. So when you do 30, it just oh, the yeah. 10 more for whatever reason seems yeah, to be well. brutal. I don't know why. but that was my. Th- I think that was my thought process. Like, yeah, don't just do what you're just using. Just do 30, man. yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, talk us through, you know, the other pieces like taking over a site and we'd we'll just be curious. you you shared a little bit about your, your experience, but talk us through when, um, you know, that you got selected to take over and kind of what was that experience like for you? Yeah. So, uh, actually it was how many months in? I, I believe it was like seven months in or so, give or take. Um, so I think it was May so five. So, oh, I was probably eight, eight coming up on like nine months in. And I just remember, actually, I think it was real cold out when it had in, initiated and Blackjack was just like, yeah, what do you think about taking over the site? I'm like, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. You know, and I just kind of like floated it out there and he didn't say anything for a while. And then he's like, oh, I need somebody for the site. He was saying one morning, somebody was like, didn't Snowman say like he would, he was like, well, I didn't think that was serious. He's like, were you serious? And I was like, I mean, yeah, if you, if you need somebody to take the site, I'll take the site. Uh, at, at the yeah. time, like my mornings were free, like everything was wide open. It was, it was, uh, it was perfect timing for, it was like, I mean, I'm here. I, was, I think at that point it was down to like four days a week. Um, I don't remember which day I was skipping, but um, yeah, so that was how it kind of like started. It was like, Oh, okay, perfect. Well then Tater Tot's like, yeah, you got to read free to lead. Um, I, I, I want to say I ordered it at that moment. I, I don't think I had a copy at that point, but I, I can't yeah. remember the timeline there. If I, if I was dug in or not, but, um, so I, I ordered it there and then we just kind of set the date and it went from there. So then I took over in May and then, it, it was like right off the bat. I think it was early May, I want to say. I, I, I'm i not no. sure. Exactly. Somewhere we've got the date, right? Yeah, well, yeah the date's somewhere. Somebody's it's in PaxNet or something, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, well, so it took over from there. And then it was like June, I got a new job and like actually stopped doing the, the business, which had mm. my mornings free. And then my mornings got consumed with the new job and it was uh yeah it was hectic for a while just making it one day a week was like i had to be like hey i can't do it Uh, most of what i do is is morning work so Mm -hmm. it's like uh hey i I need tuesday mornings off so that's kind of why that that was kind of the snowball that got me into this like chasing the tail and it was uh i i had a couple cot's through hours just like you know Full disclosure, it was like I had to prioritize, like you know, something yeah. here or there, and uh, and maybe that that was one of them. I I couldn't tell you if Polaroid was there or not, but uh, I I know I, I was I tried to be honest. If I would, I was having my cot, I would just say like you know I haven't been given this love it needed. I I'm getting swamped here, you know. I, I got a whole life change myself trying to figure it out. I, I took yeah. this on when I was in a much better place to facilitate. So, um, yeah, I mean, to me, it was a bumpy road, but the the, the cool part was is anytime Gunner, Polaroid, Tater Tot, anybody reached out, it was never like like what's going on. It was always just like, hey, can I help you? Like, what can I do to help you? There was never, yeah. You know, never any ill will. It was, it was more so just me being like, you know, in my own head about it. I never once. It was always just positive. Like, what can I do? Let me know. 
And when Tater Todd's saying that, that, that'll make you feel like, oh, wow, what am how, how did I mess up this bad that this guy juggling the same thing that I'm talking about over here is also running every site and that Twitter. That, that's a whole other thing. So Twitter, I didn't have a, a Twitter before F3. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I'm God awful at the, uh, the social media and kind of the, the elect, the electronic stuff. I'll say I'm, I'm not a wizard with it. And I, mm-hmm. I actually like, um, intentionally got off like the social media a while back, which was awesome. I think it was great stuff. But then, yeah. like, okay, this Twitter's different. Well, then when you're running like the site Twitter, I'm like, oh my lord, it was a that was that was a whole world I never wanted to enter. And I was like, mm-hmm. that was the happiest thing when I told Polaroid, I'm like, I'm not getting on Twitter for like a year and a half now that this thing's gone. Yeah. Was a that was a shell shock. Not to sound like the old man who uh, looks young on camera here, but uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, that was brutal uh, on me. I, I did not enjoy the Twitter game. And that oh, yeah. and then Slack came around, right? Paxnet was awesome, though. And I yeah. guess was, I'm, I'm sure it's even improved since I pulled it up. But towards the end, it was like, yes, please, just give me one place to look one for one spot, yeah, everything. And that hey, that's very promising. It looks like uh, Heck yeah, nothing but good. Well, I appreciate the honesty, you know, cause I think it, sometimes we overlook, like there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle for our site cues, right? It's, it's not, you know, and, and it's not just as simple as like trying to find guys to, to put on the schedule. Right. And I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, just appreciate your honesty. And, and like you said earlier, you know, your willingness to receive the help, you know, when somebody said, Hey, how can we help you? What do you need help with? And, and being able to, you know, I think that takes a lot of, a lot of courage, right? As a man that, you know, you're like, you know, a lot of times we just want to be stoic and say we got it under control. But, and, you know, one of the things that Free to Lead talks about is, is sort of the flux, right? Just like the ups and downs of life and um, some of this stuff we can't, we can't plan for. But how are things going today from sort of the, the work, uh, sort of life concentrica kind of perspective? What's, oh, it, it, I'd say it's, it's better. Um, yeah. You know, as far, I think it was, it, it might have been just a, a person. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not overly sure. Like I said, I, it, it wasn't. Uh, I, I didn't give it the probably the the greatest it needed, but it was it, as far as how I go now. Now that there, I there's no obligation where if like I miss a Tuesday, I I haven't done this yet. I'm I'm sure if anybody who's out there on you know Tuesday runs around Stinson Park might be like, yeah, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Well, it has been a couple of weeks, but I, I'm coming <laughs> off vacation season. The kids just started school back. So yeah, uh, I, I had a couple of excused absences the last couple of weeks. <laughs> there you go. You know, but that's, uh, but it, as far as that's concerned, like my, my excuse me, my, uh, my schedule kind of is fluid. So it's really just fill in, like get into restaurants whenever they'll allow us in before they fire everything up is kind of what my workflow is. So most days, if I make it to the beat down, I'm not getting to make coffee anymore, Mm -hmm. but uh, I I wouldn't say that's all, that's all for the worst. Like what, if I could have it the other way, I'd love to go to coffee every day. Cause, but I mean, it's also valuable because if I take all that time off and then just show up to coffee on a day I can make it, it's like, yeah, nothing's really changed. Everybody's, you know, you're just getting all the mm-hmm. like the good F3 love floating around. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that we had a, a baby in 2021 and took a month off and then came back and you just pick up where you left off. Yeah. Right. It's, it's you know, the guys are and everybody understands. Right. You got to do what what you got to do for your family. And yeah, yeah. for sure. And they're happy to see you every time, you know. Yeah. What what about um passing the flag to Polaroid? Polaroid ended up taking the the flag there. How did that go and uh, was he was he just he was interested and in, or how did you kind of select or land on him as the successor? Yeah, I uh I know he wanted that to be the story with that the flag pass. I was like, "Hey, that he he was very honest again. He's like, "Look, uh it, it was a it was a he apologized for being direct later. And I'm like, dude, like, thank you. Seriously. Do you know, <laughs> like, I, like how long it might've gone before I actually like just thought I was going to find somebody around the corner to take this thing over. Like, no, you just made my life way easier. Yeah. Uh, but he, he was apologizing. He like said, 
it, and it really was not this like aggressive thing that he made makes it sound like it was uh just like hey snowman just let you know like uh i think your time's coming up or whatever and he's like i just want to let you know I've, I've never been a site queue before um so if, if you're looking for somebody i was like well that that's awesome i i, I can't tell you yeah. what my response was but it was uh that was early that would was maybe uh february march I'm, I'm not somewhere in that time frame and then uh so yeah, like as it progressed, just like, hey, you still cool with this? Well, I think he was he was hungry for it. Like he was like, okay, he had yeah. taken on even the you know him and Gunner doing the whole East Side kind of yeah. helping Tater Todd out there. So they he had already like taken on this stuff, and I think he was just like, hey, I, I haven't done it yet. Like I would love it to be Corn Husker essentially, and I'm just like, well, hey. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's got to say? So, you know, I was extremely thankful cause it was like, Oh yeah. Who knows? Who knows what it would have looked like other than that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I was thankful for it for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting, right? Cause Polaroid has been helping with website and tech yeah. stuff and then sector Q roles forever. Right. And so, I, you know, it, it was probably one of those where it's like, Oh yeah, I've never been a site queue yet. Maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll go that route. Oh, no, I love it. What, you know, one of the things um, we love to get from guys is just like, I don't know, maybe advice. Uh, maybe it's advice from life or your time in the Marine Corps or just, you know, your time in F3, anything that maybe as you've interacted with guys or anything that you uh, would, would be willing to share is sort of something you've learned that you think other guys could benefit from. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a... Uh, um... It's kind of a deeper yeah, question. Yeah, I was just saying, that's a, that's a tall order. I, I Not to, to keep trending back to this, but uh, honestly, I found that like a, a lot of what I'm, uh, a lot of what I like say around certain times is based on like what I'm reading. So I don't hmm. go like super philosophical or like just started reading some like Carl Jung and that's a, that's a yeah. whole other rabbit hole, like re- <laughs> reread yeah. something to figure out what you just read. But, uh, I, I, I guess in, in all honesty is it's, uh, with all the, uh, political, like you name it, we'll just say the hot topics in, mm-hmm. in the U.S. is, um, for the, for the most part, like, although it's always like cast in a negative light because it, it it's all extremely negative, um, when you sit down and you like actually talk to the people that you had no idea existed in the same city that you existed in, uh, whatever it is, same organization. If you want to scale it out from F3, wh- whatever it is, is it's there's those people <laughs> are, are all good. You know, I, I don't mm-hmm. have any other profound way to say it mm-hmm. as I'm sitting there is it's like, when you talk to the actual like human beings that are like you within your similar environment, whatever that environment is, for the most yeah. part, there's those people where you could elect to say like, okay, work is a big one because I, I feel like work, everybody's a different personality than maybe not, uh, but but it's going to be more often than not, you're going to get a different personality than the friendship person. Well, the good thing about F3 or like, like people you want to be around or, or yeah. anything like that is uh everyone's good everybody wants the same thing and uh and and in all reality when you look at the the media and all this and that and they want to tell us what all of our differences are and uh why that's bad well i i think it is terrible when you when you lay that out there and everybody does take a stance on it but um at the end of the day, I, I'm not sure I've had a single political conversation at F3 or going to coffee. So, um, you know, when, it, when you just get down to the bare bones of like, hey, we're all just guys coming together to work out, to just be better people for ourselves and for the community. It's uh, I, I think more times than not, that's that's kind of should be the baseline for people. There are the exceptions mm. to the rule, but yeah. Uh, as far as I found, that's Marine Corps. You know, everybody, if you, if you take personality out of it, like, hey, our personality sucks to somebody else. You know, they, they mm-hmm. don't like my personality. I'm sure people don't like your personality. No right. matter how hard you try, there's got, 
and I can say that with certainty. It's like somebody is not going to like the way you do what you do. But at the end of the day, if you, you get rid of all these like hot topic talking points, like politics, huge one, it's like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you don't see eye to eye, who cares? Like, get, you know, like moving on, like yep. save that for November and, and whatever, you know, or if you want to make that your life purpose, like live, live it out. It, it, it's not necessary everywhere. And, uh, and I, I would say overall, everybody's on a positive trajectory when you talk to them real, yeah. real talk. So, well, I, I love that you, that you went there, you know, and, and that, you know, because I think you're, you're spot on. Right. And, and maybe, maybe that was some of your re- rationale for not being on social media, right? It's because if, if that's where you go and you look and, you know, the news, social media, it just blows these things out of proportion. And I think we can forget that, like you said, like when we just focus on the the guy standing next to us, right? And the, the purpose for us being out there and our shared goal around bettering the community, like you said, like e- even if you disagree on an issue, like who cares? Let's, you know, have dialogue, yeah. agree to disagree and, and move forward, you know, trying to be better and make the world a better place, you know? And, and I love that. Cause I think F3 is one of the, one of the rare places where that happens, you know, on a daily basis, you've got guys that, you know, are doing that. So I, I really appreciate that, um, that insight. Um, I would, you know, kind of, as we're wrapping up here, one of the the last questions we like to ask is just, Based on you and currently what's going on in your life, uh, where could you use prayers or, or encouragement? If we see out there, you know, what should we sort of nudge you on and, and check in with you on? Um, well, yeah. I, uh, I mean, this isn't like Facebook official for my wife, uh, who's still mm-hmm. on Facebook, but uh, my wife is pregnant. So Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, got baby number three on the way doing uh, February. So I think she's That's getting yeah. close. She's like, well, yeah, what's that? Just past the first trimester. I think she's 14 weeks. So nice. there you go. Breaking news here to the public. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> there we go. Publicly, <laughs> she is pregnant. And uh, we, we don't know the gender yet, but uh, I, hey, um, our second child, which is our son, um, he came out and his was his was a disaster. He, uh, he caused all sorts of problems. He came out perfectly fine and uh, he roughed her up. So we, we weren't sure she, you know, we were able to get pregnant again or anything like that. So mm. uh, I, I'd say here, from here there, we're already off on a blessing and um, yeah, just hoping for all that to come healthy and hopefully a better, better delivery on, on this one than the last one. So Heck yeah, man. We've got, we got baby number three in October coming oh, up. Oh, do so you? I'm awesome. Right there, hey, you. there you yeah, go. So. Well, congrats. Congrats. Yeah, man. Oh, I love it. Congrats to you guys too. That's so cool. Uh, well, this has been great. And I just, it's been awesome just hearing your story, your perspective, and and just appreciate you as a man, as a leader. You know, I think it's been great to uh, get to know you and, and yeah, just appreciate you, man. We'll do a, a little name rama here. I'll start us off. Okay. All right. uh, Brandon Fleahardy, 38, The Plague. JJ ah. Waldron, 32, Snowman. Snowman. Nice. Great job, man. And did, have it, did you have a call sign or has anybody come up with something funny to say no, after you say your name? I, I have. I, I've tested out. Uh, there was a couple times in the snow when I would pack like a little snowman. You know, I'd make oh, a yeah, yeah. snowman. It was always disastrous, but <laughs> a couple laughs here and there when, when the snow was wet enough. But no, nope, awesome. nothing yet. Awesome, People man. Still well, to figure out where the name came from, right? You right. Know? Yeah, we got to check with Frosty on that. Figure <laughs> that out. Oh, I love it. Cool. Well, I appreciate the time today. Thanks yeah, a lot. Man. Have a good yeah. day. Thanks for having me. You as well, Clay.